Shopify grows with your business no matter how far or big you grow. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage? Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling your fans' next favorite shirt or an exclusive piece of podcast merch, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash income, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash income to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth, where we're exploring all sorts of business topics. Experts from around the world join me, your host, Diane Helbig, for a conversation where they share their expertise with all of you. Take what you need, when you need it. Featured on Inc.com, Forbes, and MSNBC's Your Business, this podcast is recognized as one of the best podcasts for small business, sales, leadership, social media, and more. When it comes to business, Accelerate Your Business Growth has got it covered. And now on with the show. My guest today is Rachel Hernandez. Rachel is the Director of Brand Strategy for Next Net Media, the largest global network of trusted media outlets, link partners, and global news websites, providing clients with a steady influx of high-authority backlinks and targeted organic visitors, making them the world's largest and most successful online retail, excuse me, online retailer of optimization products and services. Thanks so much for being here today, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me and and for that great intro. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) My pleasure. Uh, And we're going to be talking about AI in in marketing. Uh, This is such a a big topic. um, And I think something that people are somewhat uncertain about. So I have a bunch of questions. And I I want to start with... um, when do you think people should be using AI to create content? And the follow-on question is, and then how do you think they should be using it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think if you are doing any sort of content creation right now for your business, you should be practicing at least using AI. So you should be engaging in tools like ChatGPT or similar working on your prompts, um, you'll probably see very quickly if you're new to using these tools that they are not that good yet. (laughs) Um, And you definitely need to do sort of a lot of trial and error and training, which can be frustrating. Um, These tools are only going to get better. So if, again, like you are, are creating any sort of content or you're interested in creating content, now is the time to kind of start tinkering around. That being said, I do not encourage anyone to publish AI generated content written as is in any of their marketing materials at this point with like very few and very slim exceptions. The things that I do use it for very regularly, and I I do use tools like ChatGPT every day, um, it's really good for like variations. So if you're trying to figure out how to say something in another way, or um, I'm a big fan if uh, I want to turn something that's 20 words into 10 words, I'll say, okay, take this sentence make it 10 words or less and give me, you know, 20 variations on it. And then from there, I'll I'll usually have like some things if I'm looking at different headlines or email subject lines, et cetera, that I can work off of. But I really, 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 really don't use it to do anything that's more than like a headline 
or a subject line or, or a title or similar at this point. Uh, and there's a few reasons why. Um, if I, and I think more people are kind of catching on. It is so easy to catch something, I think, content that's been AI generated and hasn't really been worked over. I think it's even mm-hmm. obvious to catch it. Like if it's just somebody who's kind of working off of a draft it created, once you see it, you can't, you can't unsee it. Um, <laughs> And, you know, when you are creating marketing materials or you're trying to get people to engage with your business or your brand, the most important thing is is really to get people to trust you and to trust that you're authentic about whatever service or or product that you're um, providing. And if you're using like a, a kind of some crappy text that sounds like everybody else, you're you're losing right out the gate. Um, so to sum that up, um, definitely start playing with AI tools. They're only going to get better. That's the nature of generative AI. But I would not use it for any, I wouldn't even use it for a paragraph. I don't use it for any sort of long form content at all. Because um, I think it, it's pretty obvious uh, when something is written by um, AI tools. And and that's off-putting, at least to me. Yeah, I feel like um, sometimes it, it's it's like a good starting point to get your brain going, like if you're stuck on something, but you still have to make it yours because brand is really about your voice, right? Yeah. I, I, I can't take, um, I can't take credit for, I forget who said it. It might've been Ann Hanley. I forget some, um, some marketer that I follow who I respect. I, I just can't place uh, who exactly was says to look at um, AI as like a really enthusiastic intern. Like <laughs> it, it can be helpful, but like you, you wouldn't let the intern run your uh, social media or, or publish things to your website or similar, like untouched. Okay. And that brings me to, to another question. If, if someone were to generate something using AI um, and, and not, make any edits to it or change it at all, then is it really theirs? Like, can they own that content? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. That's something that um, I've talked about too, because I, I, I love this because I think this is going to be a thing Yeah. Um, because yes, AI content, like the way that it's created is it's um, synthesized by content that already exists. That's already been written. That's already been published somewhere on the internet or in the digital realm. Um, and there have already been like some instances where people are like, do you, do you own this? Like where, where does the copyright come in? And I, I think it's like, we're all so excited about it that we're not well, a lot of people actually are thinking yeah. of some ramifications, yeah. but we're not really thinking of like those kind of like legal ramifications. And I, I absolutely agree with that. I think those are going to come into play. And um, I can see, you know, disclaimers that will need to be used or I could see like, mm. you know, um, absolutely. It, yeah. It's because you're not writing it. Right. It's not coming. And, and yeah, so then... I mean, this is one of the things that I keep thinking that it's not original. It's it's not yours. And so you really have no protection over it. So all of the things that we've gone through, the you know, people who have been creating content for, and being thought leaders for you know years, um, if they you still have to write your own stuff because otherwise you're not really a thought leader. You're taking other people's thoughts and using them. Yeah. And you're not even taking them. You're having some, yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> take it for you. Cause I, I mean, I, I think we can agree too. a lot of people that we may consider thought leaders are essentially um, taking other people's ideas and repurposing them. They, yeah. this just makes it really easy uh, for someone to pull off doing. And I've even seen recently, like um, because Google just launched AI overviews um, like this past in this past six weeks, um, you know, there are people who are trying to figure out, like, are there ways to keep my content from 
being chosen by Google to show up in that AI overview sort of advanced featured snippet because I don't want my Ooh. content to be part of that. And they're trying to see if there's like something they can do in the coding or whatever. I don't think there is right now. Um, but it's interesting because people are starting to think about that. Yeah, right. Yeah, that is interesting. And how do you think or 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 do you have any thoughts on um is if AI is going to impact SEO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take yeah. that as a yeah. So, <laughs> what, what are we looking at here? Yeah, I mean, like um, uh, people in the industry that I'm in in search engine optimization, you know, we, we've been sort of wearily eyeing um, AI for these past few years. Uh, first, first with the launch of chat GPT and, and it becoming mainstream, um, I don't think it's as dangerous as um, some people seem to suggest. Uh, AI overviews, which I, I just mentioned. Um, so if you've done a Google search recently, uh, particularly for something that's probably like top of funnel, like a, a simple question uh, that Google can answer by pulling from pieces of content, and then you don't have to click on a link to get your answer. People were anticipating that website traffic would drop about um, 20 to 25% because if you can get the answer on the search results page without having to go to a website, like why would people go to your website? And that's essentially the purpose of SEO. Right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, people have, have you know, been very scared. Um, I do think there are some opportunities here and some differentiators, though. Uh if you are doing SEO and you're focusing on uh, keywords that are bottom of funnel, that have some buyer intents, um, not necessarily that top of funnel content. So like top of funnel content for me would be like, uh, you know, what is SEO? Like to like give you the most simple example. Um, I would not necessarily be doing SEO the same way or accepting the same kind of traffic to those posts. But if I'm doing content for my website, then I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and get more advanced about like ways to figure out how to get the best backlinks for your website and which providers, et cetera, and just kind of get a little bit more bottom funnel because so far those AI overviews are not going to answer questions that are that have that kind of intent. And so while the traffic to your website may drop, to me, that's a it's a vanity metric because if it's not converting mm. or they're not sticking around, like what's the point anyway? Right. So it's not necessarily a loss if you're, you know, making your website a great user experience, you're doing the right kind of SEO for your bottom funnel pages. And then you're still converting the traffic that comes in. So I don't necessarily think it's like the big, you know, sweeping change that everybody thinks it's going to be. It's just SEO is always changing. And then I, even I like for AI overviews, I do think it's a good opportunity when you show up in them. I think it's a good brand opportunity. Uh, they show your logo. They show the name of your website. If people keep seeing you consistently come up as a trusted source by Google for pieces of information about the service or industry that you're in. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing to get that sort of recognition. And in terms of SEO in general too, it, it would no doubt build more authority to your website. So those money pages that you do want to continue to rank for with a traditional blue link are, are probably going to be doing better if you show up in AI overview. So that makes change. sense to me. Yeah, I get that. That I, I hadn't thought about that, but when you say it, that makes a lot of sense. So what are, in your estimation, what are some of the best AI tools currently? <laughs> um, right now, if I'm a marketer, um, I, I do use ChatGPT. I know I've, I've brought that up a few times. Um, it's just, it's very easy. It's very user-friendly. I don't use it to get information. Um, again, I, I mostly use it to brainstorm or um, come up with like fun little lists of things. I, I do a lot of pop culture references in my marketing. So um, while I, I I certainly would love to spend hours coming up with SEO puns about Taylor Swift, <laughs> like, I don't have the time to do that. So ChatGPT is 
proven to be very useful for that. Um, if I'm using like a, a whole um, a software, I I really like uh, a software called Copymatic AI. Um, if you've used like a, a Jasper or similar, uh, it's it's similar. So I like that one because it the people who um, have created the software have have trained their model to really hone in on different types of marketing content. So um, it's really like it knows, I think, better than ChatGPT. Like if you want to do um, a value proposition, even something as simple as that, or it's trained on different copywriting for formulas. Um, it's trained on how to write specific sorts of web pages, about pages. It actually can help you like build a website. It'll help you with coding and things like that. And I do think it's better trained than that model. They've been using OpenAI for a really long time. Hmm. Um, so that's the software I'll use if I really want to get more into like that marketing, marketing content. Um, and then those are really the big ones. For SEO, I have been a fan of a tool called ClearScope for quite some time. Uh, and this was before uh, all of this stuff started getting mainstream. But essentially what that tool does is you kind of give it the keyword you want something to rank for. It pulls like the top 30, I think, um, sites ranking for that term in the search results. And then it tells you what that content looks like, how long it is. Um, it kind of gives you like an average. Um, how many headers do they have? How many times do they mention this keyword? What are some topics within that content that they focus on? So a lot of my job is creating content to rank in search engines. And I was doing a lot of this manually, hmm. uh, just like spreadsheets and really like literally looking at websites and being like, okay, what's what's here and what's there. So that's a really, really useful AI tool uh, if you're if you're using SEO. Um and Surfer SEO is similar. I think it's a little bit cheaper of a place point. I just happen to think ClearScope has a better interface and does a better job. Okay. And, and um, you know, I'm really curious about video because <laughs> I know there's rabbit. What What is it? I, I know I, I, I've seen yeah. information uh, like about some video things, but I don't know. Uh, what What's your sense of that? We experimented a little bit with a tool called HeyGen. Um, and and I, I think it's one of those things where I can spot when people use it. So mm. basically, we were, we we're always trying to scale our marketing content. Um, and so you'll, you can put somebody um, as like a talking head, somebody on your team, or you can hire somebody. And you film them like reciting a script and you have to sign a waiver. You have to do all of these things, all this verification process to use this person's image on um, with this tool. And then you can basically give the tool any script and it makes it look like this person who's your talking head. They don't have to ever film again. Um, so you can essentially churn out, you know, a hundred videos like in a day. Um, I think there's an absolute use case for this for specific industries. Uh, I can see it being really useful for entrepreneurs. Um, I used to work in the real estate sphere. Uh, that's where I started my marketing career. I did copywriting for real estate. And um, like I could see that working. Um, but again, to me, this is it's still a little too uncanny. Um, it, it doesn't quite have that authenticity that mm -hmm. I think we are seeing time and time again, people are really looking for when they're engaging in any sort of marketing content. I mean, you see the explosion of things like TikTok, uh, you know, Reddit, et cetera. Like people are looking for authenticity. And so it's just a little bit too cold. I think it's just not, regardless of whether or not it's AI and the weirdness of somebody being able to take somebody's face and make it say anything, which <laughs> is like a thing. Um, I just don't think it's like a good video. Like it's just like from a pure marketing perspective, I, I just can't see it being as engaging and exciting as something with a real person that's a being real filmed. Person. Yeah. I, I tend to agree with that. Uh, it, it sort of feels like 
the only reason you're doing it is so that you can, you know, pump out a whole lot of content. Yeah, which is legit. Like I said, sure. like our company looked into it because we have a ton of resources and and video production's tough. Like, yeah, it's a lot of work. It takes, you know, hours to edit one video. That's a few minutes, depending on who you're working with. Um, and so it, it's so easy to fall into that trap of, um, especially when it's cheaper. Like I, I don't knock anybody for, for doing these things, especially we all have limited resources and I happen to have a lot of resources and I still feel like mine are limited. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter if you are saving money on video, if that video is not converting or doing anything for you. Right. Right. That, that is the key. So with everything that is going on in, in today's environment and so many changes going on with the listeners being you know, a lot of small business owners, but you know, business leaders, some are marketers, but but not all. What would what would you tell people they should be learning about or learning more about right now? With regards to AI or yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, yes. Oh yeah, no, no problem. That's that's such a good question. Um, I mean, again, if you are a, a small business owner, um, and and we, I mean, we're an agency, so we work with thousands of of small business owners too, and and they come to us because you know it's it's hard to pull off marketing when you're also just trying to run your business. That's yeah, you know, it, it, it's so much to take on, and yeah, it's yeah. so important. Um, so I would say when you're looking to AI as a solution, um. I think I like the combo of working with like a contractor or a freelancer or an agency who uses AI tools to make whatever product or service I'm working with them. Like I I do work with some, some freelancers and agencies who use AI for their creation, but they know how to do it really well. Mm. Um, and I think that's the balance because then you are still saving the, the time and the resources, um, but you're not putting out a product that's not good, um, but you still get it taken off your plate, you know? Right. So I think that for me, that that has been like a really, really nice balance. And then I play with AI a lot. I use it a lot. It's it's hard to get the hang of to use oh, really wow. well. It really is. So until you kind of feel like you have a little bit more of a grasp, um, that's what I would do is I would partner with people who have kind of been working with this and really know how to use it to scale out what they're doing for you. So you're getting it, but it's going to be at a cheaper rate, but it's, you're not sacrificing on the quality. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I appreciate that answer. And it leads me to another question, which is this, it, it, um, I guess it worries me is the best <laughs> way to say it, that because of AI, there's going to be a whole lot of people thinking that they can be marketers and they can have an agency and yeah. do business, you know, Tell small business owners that they can help them when they really don't know what they're doing. So how does a small business owner make sure that they're like, are there certain questions they should be asking? Like, how do they make sure that whoever they're talking to really, truly is someone like you? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's such a good question. And so true. It's going <laughs> to it's going to be a lot of um, mediocre yeah, I think rolling out very, very quickly. Yeah. Um, I would say I, I if they're established, I mean, the like we've been around since 2010. So we've seen it all. Like we've kind of navigated through tons of changes in this industry. And the agencies that I work with now are contractors or freelancers were already well established before. Chat GPT launched in, you know, it's 2022, I think at this point. Like, um, you know, I I would want somebody who's been around. And um, whenever I work with anybody, I want to see results. I want to see a deck with case studies. I want to see some examples of work. I want to see some examples of like real KPIs that were hit. Like, 
did you increase traffic? Did you increase conversions or revenue? Or if you're looking at like a social media, like what happened with the engagement or um, CTRs? You know, like the proof is always, they're always going to have the proof to back it up. Somebody who's just coming into a sphere and it's just like, I'm going to do, you know, have a have a creative agency. I'm going to use ChatGPT to do it. They're not going to have like the actual examples to back up their work. That only comes with like time spent. Uh, so that's probably what I would look for because agencies are all going to be adopting AI. Um, right. But I think it'd be the same thing. I'd just be like, how long have you been? You know, who are some of, if you're allowed to tell me who are some of your clients. And then I always love, I, I want a case study. I want some examples. Yeah, I love that answer. Thank you. I think that is so great and really important for people to listen to um, because it's really easy for someone to say all the right things, but you want to see what their results have been. So, yeah. And the other thing I would say too, just thinking about it is I always like to like look at if I'm going to work with, um, a designer or somebody to help with our social media or someone to help with like an email campaign or whatever. I, I like to sign up for their own marketing and see like, ah. um, one of the things that, you know, part of my job is I do SEO for an SEO company and it's very, not just so we can drive traffic, but because it's proof of concept for people who come to us. Uh, if we're showing up, in search for (laughs) SEO terms, we obviously know we're doing. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Rachel, I really appreciate this. I think this is great information for the listeners and um, sort of demystifies a a lot of this. So thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you. This is a lot of fun. I really appreciate you letting me nerd out a little bit about Uh, AI. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. And and will you let the listeners know how they can find you? Um, yeah. So I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um, so it's Rachel A. Hernandez. If you think that I have interesting things to say, that's a good place to um, see other things that I have to say. And then the other piece of it is if you do want to learn more about SEO, um, I manage the Hoth blog. I do all of the content on our website. The blog is great. We upload twice a week, um, everything up to date with SEO. We also cover other digital marketing uh, content and um, also like news, which obviously there's been a ton lately. So that's a really, really great resource to check out. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Excuse me. And as I said, I appreciate you and listeners. Thank you. You are who we're doing this for. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, a production of Evergreen Podcasts. Discover more episodes of this podcast and explore others at evergreenpodcast.com. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And if you're looking to get your sales strategy headed in the right direction, pick up a copy of Succeed Without Selling on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We We out. out.